In this video, we are going to talk about some of the shots or vaccines that you might be offered in pregnancy. So we're going to talk about vaccines first. So while live vaccines are not considered safe in pregnancy, there are some vaccines that have been demonstrated to be safe and are actually recommended during this time. These vaccines are non-attenuated or not alive, and the risks associated with the vaccine are far lower than the risks associated with the pathogen they are designed to protect you from. I have uh, included links, of course, for you to look through for each of these shots. The first one we are going to talk about is the tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis vaccine, or Tdap is how I'm going to be referring to it from now on. So when you are not pregnant, it is recommended that you get the Tdap vaccine every 10 years. However, it is now recommended in every pregnancy regardless of your vaccination history. This is because the pertussis component protects against whooping cough. Um, the Tdap vaccine is a non-attenuated vaccine, so not alive, that is safe in pregnancy. Um, whooping cough is a serious disease that can be deadly for babies. And unfortunately, babies do not start building up their own protection against whooping cough until they begin vaccinations at two months old. So by getting this vaccine in the early part of your third trimester, you actually pass along levels of antibodies to your baby before birth. And these antibodies help to protect your baby against whooping cough in the first couple months of life. You can get the tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis vaccine through your family doctor. Next up is the influenza vaccine or the flu shot. So this really should be offered to all pregnant people and you can get it at any stage in your pregnancy very safely. What the flu shot does is it protects you against influenza related complications, especially during flu season, so November through April. Um, this is because the flu is more likely to cause severe illness in pregnant people than for people who are not pregnant. Vac vaccination with an inactivated flu vaccine lowers the risk for complications from the flu during pregnancy and after your baby is born. Most flu shots are inactivated flu vaccines. However, it's always a good idea to talk with your family doctor or pharmacist or whoever is giving you this shot. So moving on to protection from the varicella zoster virus. So VZV, which is what I'm going to call it from now on, is the virus that causes chickenpox and shingles. So VZV is a serious risk to pregnant people and fetuses, and the risk really depends on your immune status and the timing of your exposure in pregnancy. So if you are not immune to VZV, or if you do not know if you are immune and have had direct exposure to someone with chickenpox, please let your midwife know. Unlike the chickenpox, which is an airborne contagion, shingles is only contagious if you have direct exposure to the fluid-filled sores. Once the sores have healed over, the risk of exposure to the fluid is minimized. As much as 10% of the adult population have no immunity to VZV and can be given an immunoglobulin shot or antibodies safely in pregnancy if they have been exposed. By giving this antibody shortly after exposure, we may not prevent infection, but we can decrease the severity of the infection. If you are exposed to varicella, please contact your midwife. They will review your chart and may offer you a blood test or recommend that you get this immunoglobulin based on your immune status. If you are confirmed to have VZV infection in pregnancy, your midwife will consult with an obstetrician. The varicella zoster virus vaccine may be given in the postpartum if needed, but as it is a live virus, it is not recommended to give this vaccine during pregnancy. The last vaccine that I'm going to talk about today is the MMR vaccine, or the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine. So this is mostly due to immunity to rubella, which is also called the German measles. Rubella is a self-limiting childhood disease. It's usually a minor infection characterized by a rash, and it's pretty uncommon in North America because we vaccinate for it. However, if it is contracted during pregnancy, it can be severely damaging to the development of the fetus. Um, they can develop something called congenital rubella syndrome. And abnormalities associated with this can vary according to the gestational age at which time the infection occurred. 
generally, if you have immunity to rubella, it is protective against uh, intrauterine rubella infection causing congenital rubella syndrome. So we routinely test for immunity to rubella in your prenatal blood work. And if you are not immune, um, then you might be offered the MMR vaccine in the postpartum. The MMR vaccine is not recommended during pregnancy as it is a live attenuated virus. Uh, the vaccine is usually well tolerated. Side effects of vaccination are pretty rare. Now, the last shot that I'm going to talk to you about is not a vaccine. It is actually a blood product. So we're going to talk about Rogam injections now. So what this, what this is about is it's about the rhesus factor in your blood, which is the Rh factor, also known as the D antigen. And it is an antigen present on red blood cells in the majority of people. You might know your blood type, and if you don't, ask your midwife. It's something that we routinely screen for at the start of pregnancy. If you are Rh positive, for example, the blood type O positive, then you have this antigen. If you are Rh negative, for example, O negative, you do not have this antigen. So why we care about this when you are pregnant is because of what can happen and how your body can react. If you have an Rh negative blood type and your baby has an Rh positive blood type. It doesn't work the other way around. Like if you have an Rh positive blood type and your baby has an Rh negative blood type, your body doesn't care, but it's if you have a negative and then your baby has a positive that your body can react to the presence of these antigens on their blood cells that you don't normally have. So what we're thinking about here is hemolytic disease of the fetus or a newborn. Um, so in pregnancy, the placenta actually prevents the mixing of uh, parental and fetal blood cells. During birth, especially during the separation of the placenta, some mixing of the parental and fetal blood may occur. And then when the pregnant person's red blood cells lack the D antigen and are then exposed to it for the first time, the parent's immune system will recognize it as a foreign body and make antibodies. And then what can happen is that in future pregnancies, anti-D antibodies are still in circulation and they're small enough to cross the placenta and attack the fetal blood as a foreign substance. And this can lead to miscarriage in future pregnancies. Without treatment, an Rh negative birthing parent with an Rh positive baby has a 12 to 16% chance of a damaging immune reaction in subsequent pregnancies. Any traumatic events such as abdominal trauma, amniocentesis, threatened miscarriage, or other bleeding in pregnancy can lead to exposure of the pregnant person's blood to fetal blood and then sensitization. It is recommended that anti-G immunoglobulins, so that's known as RIG or ROGAM, which is a sterilized blood product, it's recommended that this be given to you if you experience any of these situations, plus at the 28th week of gestation, and then within the first 48 hours postpartum, if your baby actually is Rh positive, to prevent uh, maternal blood from making the antibodies. So anti-D immunoglobulin side effects are pretty much anything you would get from any injection, so local swelling at the injection site, sometimes headache or chills, um, no severe reactions occur when treatment is given intramuscularly, so into your muscle. To uh, your midwife will discuss this with you, and if your blood type is Rh negative, offer to book an appointment with you at the hospital clinic in the 28th week of pregnancy. You will be offered Rogam again postpartum, either by the nurses on the postpartum floor, or your midwife may bring it to your home if you have a home birth or choose early discharge. We unfortunately just don't know your baby's blood type until after they're born. If you know that both parents of this baby are Rh negative, then just genetically speaking, they're also going to be Rh negative because it is a recessive trait. However, if your partner is Rh positive, then there is a chance that your baby is Rh positive and the recommendation is to proceed with this shot to protect any future pregnancies that you have. So those are the most common shots that you are likely to encounter during pregnancy or the postpartum. There are, of course, other ones. Um, if anything comes up in your care, your midwife will talk to you about it. And please ask them any questions that you have.